Why was Jesus of Nazareth referred to as the Word? Greetings, mortals. I'm your host, Simon. Welcome back to the Library of Gnosis. In Christ theology, the Logos, Word, Discourse, or Reason, is a name or title of Jesus Christ and is derived from the prologue to the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This has always stood out to me as being quite a particular title to give someone, but during my research I have begun to form an opinion on why Jesus was given this title. The Christian belief that in the beginning was the word draws obvious parallels to the Hindi Aum, which symbolizes the supreme personality of the Godhead. In Hinduism, it is the belief that the Lord started creating the world after chanting Aum. You find a lot of strange parallels between supposedly disparate belief systems. What if I told you that telepathy is real and you're experiencing it every day, even now? If your internal lexicon matches mine, then my thoughts can become yours through a series of small mouth movements. I am able to convey something that before only existed inside the confines of my own mind. By hearing my words, my thoughts become yours. You are thinking my thoughts. So, in a sense, you actually become me at that moment. I express a part of my inner being to you, and you integrate that into your being, like a metaphysical transplant. In Christian theology, there is a concept known as kenosis, the act of emptying. It is the self-emptying of Jesus' own will and him becoming entirely receptive to God's divine will. This is also known in Christian theology as divinization or Christ consciousness. Anthanasius, Bishop of Alexandra, stated his belief in literal deification. The Word was made flesh in order that we might be made gods. Just as the Lord putting on the body became a man, so also we men are both deified through his flesh, and henceforth inherit everlasting life. Athanasius also observed, For the Son of God became man, so that we might become God. In John 10.34, Jesus defends himself against a charge of blasphemy by stating, Have I not said that ye are gods? Also in Psalm 82.6, I said, you are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Now, to explain my hypothesis, I will need to give you some background on my worldview. I think an excellent place to start would be some of the most ancient spiritual teachings known to man. In Hinduism, there is a concept known as Atman, a Sanskrit word that means inner self, spirit, or soul. In Hindu philosophy, especially in the Vedanta school of Hinduism, Atman is the first principle, the true self of an individual beyond identification with phenomena, the essence of an individual. In order to attain liberation, moksha, a human being must acquire self-knowledge, gnosis, or, as the Hindus call it, Atvajnana, which is to realize that one's true self, Atman, is identical with the transcendent self, Brahman. 
The six orthodox schools of Hinduism believe that there is Atman, soul self, in every being. To complement this, the Hindus also have another concept known as Leela, or the divine play. Leela is comparable to the western theological position of pantheism, which describes the universe as God taking a physical form in order to experience the interplay between the elements of the universe. The basic concept is that we are all the ground of being, the Brahman or the God himself dreaming that we are not. This is not specific to Eastern Orthodoxy, nor to one specific religion, but an idea that proliferates most spiritual teachings. Simply put, it is the idea that we are the universe experiencing itself. So if you imagine Jesus as the Logos from this perspective, as the Godhead dreaming he is a man, this concept of Jesus as the Word begins to make a lot more sense. Jesus was the Word of God made flesh. Then Jesus spoke his gospel. Good news. And so the Word of God emanated into his disciples. So if we accept the Hindu concept of samsara, a Sanskrit word that means wandering or world, with the connotation of cyclical, gratuitous change. It is also the concept of rebirth and cycliality of all life, matter and existence. In short, it is the cycle of death and rebirth. Then even if Jesus' coronal body dies, his teachings live on. His truth. The vessel might have died on the cross, but the Logos is not mortal, but the eternal reason that is God. Each time we are born we forget who we are, a blank canvas for the most part. But if in your previous incarnation you for instance wrote a book, if by some cosmic coincidence you happen to pick that book up in your next lifetime, you then acquire that previously uncovered knowledge. All learning is remembering, as Plato once said. So you are in a sense reborn again as who you were before learning that past uncovered knowledge. Then when you integrate that with who you were in the moment before, you then become who you are now. Therefore, since we are all the same, deep, deep inside, all the ground of being, when these sacred teachings, the word of God, enters the mind of our new avatar, that hidden spark of divinity inside of us is reborn again, and we see the unity of all things and events. You are God pretending you are not, or as Paul Tillich so eloquently put it, we are all the ground of being. Now that we have become so connected through the world wide web, this process has been exponentially increased. What hope would a poor peasant living in a remote village have of acquiring the knowledge of the ancients? Most could not even read. Not to mention the great distances this knowledge would have to travel by word of mouth, a big game of Chinese whisper. There is no telling how distorted the teaching would be before they reached them. Martin Luther fought to have the Bible translated from Latin so that the common man could read the Bible for himself instead of having to rely on the authority of the priesthood. But until the internet came along, we still relied on these authorities. Cuz, who do you think edited the Bible? Now a multitude of lost and apocryphal books from scripture have emerged and are freely available to anyone with an internet connection and a willing mind.
If I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulder of giants. Isaac Newton So, in this way, the Son of God never truly died, but he lives on, carried by his eternal truth. He is resurrected inside all of us when we receive his gospel. This has been my view on why Jesus was called the Logos. Thank you for listening. See you next time, mortal. Subscribe for more, give it a like if you enjoyed it, and feel free to share it. If you want to support my work, you can find me on Patreon at Library of Gnosis. You can find me on YouTube, Facebook, and BitChute at Library of Gnosis. The audio versions of my broadcasts are available on Spotify as a podcast at Library of Gnosis. Music is produced by Coda from Coded.music.